Hi there, it's me, Pete Smith. Uh, as my New Year's resolution for posting more videos to my YouTube channel, I'm gonna do a video today, even though I'm away, uh, and it's about an article that somebody sent me on the Japanese train system, which I found extremely interesting. So let's get to it. PQ West Self Express. Hi, I'm Pete Smith, and uh, don't forget, if you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, this article is uh, called The Amazing Psychology of Japanese Trains, Train System, Stations. The Amazing Psychology of Japanese Train Stations. Now, I was in Tokyo recently and I loved the train system. I thought it was just so smooth, so, so well run. Uh, just to give credit, this is by, um, this was posted in City Lab, C I T Y L A B dot com, by a man named Alan Richards. Alan, A L L A N, Richards, like Richard, but with a Z instead of a D. R I C H A R Z, May 22nd, 2018. The Amazing Psychology of Japanese Train Station. There's a picture of the people. And, uh, so this article talks about the way that they're using sound and sight and different things that they call nudging, nudge theory, which is getting people to behave in a certain way by nudging them through uh, either light or sound or uh, some visual, uh, visual command. So it's a little creepy, but at the same time, if you're using it for good, maybe it's okay, I don't know. Um, anyway, their train system is amazing. Um, they talk about, let's see, so this article says uh, it's a very, very busy train system. Uh, they oftentimes run at 200% capacity. That's a lot. Um, but yet, it's so orderly, like Japan in general is so orderly. Um, so, for example, they're so much, they're so punctual, which I love about them is that uh, on May 11th, West Japan Railways issued a florid apology after one of its commuter trains left the station 25 seconds early. They issued, could you imagine in New York, uh, the MTA issuing an apology because one of their trains left 25 seconds early one day? Hmm. Crazy, but they are punctual. Now, uh, let's see, 13 billion uh, passenger trips a year. So that's a lot. Uh, let's see. So they're beneath the bustle, unobtrusive features are designed to unconsciously manipulate passenger behavior via light, sound, and other means. So here's another, here's another picture of the people in the train station. You can see it's quite busy, but the funny thing is everybody, you know, most of the Japanese businessmen, which I, I found really interesting, um, all wear the same uh, outfit. I mean, it's basically a, a dark suit. <laughs> so when I was there, I kind of stood out a little bit, you know, because I had uh, some, some you know, my own style going, you know, and uh, uh, anyway. So uh, this is nudge theory, pioneered by behavioral economist Richard Thaler, was awarded the 2017 Nobel Memorial Prize for his work, and Harvard Law School professor Cass, C-A-S-S, -S, Sunstein, S-U-N-S-T-E-I-N. Uh, this nudge theory uh, says that gentle nudges can subtly, in subtly influence people towards decisions in, the, in their own parentheses, or society's, parentheses, best interests. So, uh, so here's some of the things they do. Uh, they develop ways to help riders to stand in line. Okay, this might be like footprints painted on the ground or uh, um, different things painted on the escalators, like up and uh, showing which side to stand on. It's funny, they say... Um, uh, that Japan has uh, their, their uh, escalator cues are the best. Uh, 
uh, commuters know how to queue on an escalator. And I find it, it's exactly the opposite of New York because New York, you stand on the right and the people passing go on your, up on your left. In Japan, it's the opposite, maybe because they drive on the opposite side of the road. But in Japan, you stand on the left and people that want to pass you go pass on the right. But they have like different things painted on the stairways to show you which side to go up the stairs on. And then the other people are coming down that st staircase on the other side. Like, so stay to your left or stay to your right. Funny thing is, some, it changes sometimes from station to station. Sometimes those arrows are showing you on the right side of the stairway. Sometimes they're on the left side. So, um, but anyway, they're saying that this is helpful. Uh, they're saying the ultimate in mood lighting. This is very interesting. Uh, Japan has one of the highest suicide rates among OECD nations. And often those taking their own lives do so by leaping from station platforms into the path of oncoming trains. With Japan averaging one such instance per day. It is a brutal disruptive end that can also wreak havoc across the transit system. So that's strange. One person jumping in front of a train every day. So to address this issue, um, they're experimenting with these blue lights. They're installing these blue ceiling lights, like LED panels, and they're putting them, I'll show you a picture, they're putting them in different parts of the station, mostly towards the ends, because they say most of the suicides happen there. Um, and this is supposed to have a soothing effect on people and supposedly reduce the suicide rate. But I, I just wonder if they're barking up the wrong tree. Like people, people that are committing suicide, are, first of all, why are they committing? Why is one per day jumping in front of a train? It's just, and if you, if they don't do it at the train station, will they do it someplace else? I mean, is, is the, really the problem is why are people wanting to kill themselves? Uh, but I guess for now, it's, it's become enough of a problem that they, it's interrupting the trains. So uh, they feel like they need to curtail that. So it says they're uh, installing these mood lights. And um, some stations such as Shin Koiwa Station in Tokyo bolster that their LED regime with colored roof panels, allowing blue tinted sunlight to filter down onto the platform. So... This blue light seems to be something they say uh, uh, in 2013 they analyzed over 10 year period shows 84% decline in the number of suicide attempts at stations where blue lights are installed. A subsequent study revealed no corresponding increase in suicide attempts at neighboring stations lacking such lights. I'm not sure what that means. No increase if they didn't have the lights. Was there a decrease? I don't know. Uh, probably not, I guess so. Maybe the blue lights are working. Also, they're installing railings, chest high railings, where there aren't, where the doors are not. Um, so I guess that's also helping a little bit, but uh, it's strange that people are using the train so much for uh, suicide. And, but you know, these measures, excuse me, these measures are helpful, perhaps, in stopping the suicide from happening right then, but they're really not addressing why people are, feel the need to end their lives. But uh, nonetheless, um, you know, one of the great things about I, these, these uh, stations and these trains is people line up to get on the train. Hello, New York! Please, this would be so great if I don't know if people would actually do it, though. Japanese are really nice people and they're like good with order and and, uh, you know, doing things that like just being cooperative. And like if somebody does something out of line, they, they all like sort of notice and like that person is kind of like outside the box. So it's it's harder to do weird things there because you're obviously going against the tide. So, but yeah, there's lines to get on the train. Isn't that nice? People line up like the first person that got to that door there for each door of the train where the train's going to stop. There's a line. There's it's 
painted on the ground. This is the line for this train. And people stand there and they get in line. And it's like a double line. And it's, it's so great because in New York, you just people just line up all across the station and then they kind of bully their way onto the train. Some people might just come up. You've been waiting 10 minutes to get on and then somebody just runs right next to you and boom, goes right on the train past you and pushing, you know, old ladies out of the way and everything. It's like, it's so much more, it's so much better with lines and, and they use them and they use them effectively. I love that. I love those lines. It's like so nice to just, okay, I'm fifth in line. So, you know, I know I'm going to get on the train right when, when it's time for my, when the line moves. So, okay. Some other things, uh, a song for peaceful departure. Uh, another way, I guess, to reduce the stress uh, for people on the trains is they've hired, they hired a, um, a songwriter, a famous con composer, Hiroki, H-I-R-O-A-K-I, Ide, I-D-E, to create Hasha melodies, H-A-S-S-H-A, -S -S -A, melodies. So each station now has their own little melody, da 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 and this tells you the train's arriving, and then it, they play it again when it's leaving. And this is supposed to reduce stress. Here, I'll play some of these for you. And uh, you'll see what I mean. So instead of the bing bong. Just so nice, right? Yeah. This is another station. Like a little bedtime story, right? Hey. Hey. Ah, we're here. Let's get off. Arigato gozaimasu. So see, they're pretty good. Now I think the next one is like the one that's like I don't understand why that. Yeah, no, this is not good. This is like uh, hello, hello, uh, pick up the phone. Uh, I think this would make me more tense. But I, I guess you know maybe the composer ran out of ideas for that one. I don't know. Anyway, each station has its own little melody now, its own uh, identifiable. Uh, Sorry, how do, I, how do I turn this thing off? Uh, yeah, okay. So that's how that goes. Um, huh. Oh, you know, one of the funny things that happened with these melodies was the people around the stations got really mad because they'd have to listen to this melody over and over and over. Like the first couple times, it's cool, but when you've heard it for one million times, all over and over and over every day, again and again and again, it could drive you crazy. So I could see, you know, it's like, for me, it's the commercial uh, Cars for Kids. One, eight, seven, seven, Cars for Kids. K-A-R-S, Cars for Kids. I like, I cannot stand that commercial. I, a note to anyone, any channel that uses that commercial, I actually turn the station off when I hear that commercial. I turn it off immediately because I can't stand it. So anyway, I don't know why. It just that that. Uh, so I could see their point that that can get a little annoying after a while, and and maybe it's I don't know. Maybe it's too loud. Maybe if they turned it down, that might help. But anyway, they're using these tunes again to reduce stress. So it's all to manipulate behavior, which is good. But you know, you got to wonder too, like. If they can manipulate behavior in a positive way, couldn't they do it in a negative way too? Not that they would, but that's the scary part about you know doing these behavioral manipulation technique things. Uh, for example, suicide. If you're preventing suicide with a blue light or whatever and sound, does that mean then uh, conversely you could increase suicide uh, through some of these means, which I, I mean, no one would, would want to do that. No one would do that, I don't think. But, um, you know, you got to wonder, you know, like, 
where do where are we going with this stuff it's just like all technology you have to be careful because it can be used for good or it can be used for bad and you know you just got to be careful and as you can see some of these things are not obvious uh, the blue light i would never know because they say it looks like a bug zapper so and then oh you talk about not obvious um they're using a technique younger people might be a little boisterous or aggressive not so much but you know they they have that too and they use an ultrasound frequency to sort of curtail boisterous uh behavior you see as we get older we uh lose a certain frequency in hearing so it doesn't affect the older people so they play this sound and the older people just like walk by and walk by wherever the sound's playing nothing they've, they've they've studied this and they walk by and they have no reaction but then younger people will walk by and be like ah it's too loud or or um they might just suddenly get uh you know like agitated or uh or nervous or you know visibly they'll something they'll stop and like take notice like where's it they don't know where it's coming from or why but um yeah they use this they use a, a sound let me see if i could find that yeah teenager be gone it says teenager be gone uh despite or perhaps because of its reputation as a remarkably safe country and it does seem that way japan is nonetheless vigilant in combating youth delinquency uh, to address this, uh, the particular frequency used, 17. Now, this says kilohertz, but I think it's hertz. Mm -hmm. I think they make a correction at the end of this. Uh, let me see what it is. Uh, correction. Incorrectly, an earlier version. Oh, okay, so it is kilohertz. So um, they use a frequency of uh, 17 kilohertz. Can generally be heard by those under the age of 25. Hmm. I'm over 25. Older people can't detect such frequencies thanks to the age-related hearing loss known as prebiscosis. prebiscosis. These devices, the brainchild of a Welsh inventor and also used to fend off loitering teens in the U.S. and Europe. Ah, we're using them too, huh? Have been enthusiastically adopted in Japan. Standing outside of one of Tokyo's stations, numerous exits on a recent summer day, it was easy to see the effectiveness of this deterrent in action. Weary salarymen and aged obachan, obachan, passed under the sonic deterrent without changing pace. Among uniform clad students, however, the reactions were evident. A suddenly quickened pace, a look of confusion or discomfort, and often a cry of Usuisai! Urusai! Loud. Urusai! None appeared to connect the noise to the deterrence placed almost flush in the ceiling panels above. Tricky, tricky. So that's about it. Uh, Oh, one other method that they're using now, point and call. That's when they say something, they point or go this way. Ticket window, that way. Please get on the train now. Point and call. Uh, method called shisakanko. Shisakanko. Shisakanko in executing tasks. By physically pointing to an object and then verbalizing one's intended action, a greater portion of the brain is engaged, providing improved situational awareness and accuracy, reducing human error by as much as 85%. Pointing and calling is now a major workplace safety feature in industries throughout Japan. So this is, you know, this can be used everywhere, point and call. It's uh, used by train conductors, drivers, and platform attendants. They're mandated to use point and call method. I see that too with politicians, right? Don't they point and call? I'm going to save the planet. I'm going to save the planet. Uh, that's my Bernie. Uh, okay, so anyway, that's uh, like so many aspects of Japanese transit culture. Shisa Kanko. Point and call. So that's it. This is uh, the article. This is the guy who wrote it. Uh, Alan Richards. 
And I just thought it was very interesting. I uh, took those high-speed trains. They were fantastic. Um, just comfortable, really comfortable. Uh, great little snack carts and the bathrooms. I don't, I'll have to do a whole other video about the bathrooms in Japan. Best bathrooms you ever want to be in. Just, you know, I'm like, I feel like we're primitive here in the U.S. now. And uh, after being in the J Japanese bathrooms, just so nice. And they're like that on the trains and in all the public places. Even like, you know, you go to a Burger King or whatever. The bathroom is beautiful, clean, and they got the great toilets. They're like, psh, once you learn how to use them, <laughs> they could be a little, there's a few uh, gadgets on there that you got to learn how to use. But once you do, you love it. So anyway, this is Pete Smith. Hope you like this video. Please subscribe uh, if you do. And even if you don't, please subscribe. <laughs> you don't ever have to watch again. Just subscribe. And uh, I'll be putting out some more music for you. I'm away right now doing a new music video in Monteverde, Costa Rica. And I uh, hope you enjoyed this. And uh, take care. Be safe. So long. Be safe.